Welcome, Highbury Church and friends. It's Thursday, the 14th of May. Yesterday was refreshing in a kind of unexpected way. Most of our family went for a walk in an unexplored place. Like Hampton Hill, spectacular views over Cheltenham, across to Cleve Hill, the Malverns, a sliver of the Severn glistening. And then the sight of canola fields in full bloom just beyond the stone wall. Paths wending their way through the woods. A toadstool. Beautiful flowers that I can't name. I do know the name of the Scottish thistles, and they were beautiful, purple, magnificent. And then coming back down into Cheltenham, going with my wife, we went to the chemist. I had something to pick up, and that's the first time I have been uh, to the chemist since lockdown the strangeness of that, the quietness of it, having to leave the shop and wait for 20 minutes outside and then return again, and then to go and get groceries, the continuing quietness. And then after a fantastic meal made by one of the children, we watched a film called The Way. I've watched it many times. My first encounter was when I thought perhaps I was going to have to give up my doctoral work simply because I got to a place where I couldn't imagine how to finish. And then watching it again after I had completed that work, the arduous long journey, I've watched it on several occasions and yet yesterday there was a newness about it again. Tom Avery is the main character. He's an ophthalmologist, an eye doctor. He's at odds with his son Daniel, who he believes is throwing everything away by quitting his doctorate and going off to see the world. He receives a devastating call on the golf course. His son has begun a pilgrimage on the Camino from France through to uh, Santiago. He gets on a flight to go and collect the body of his son. He decides to have his son's re remains cremated. Perhaps to deal with his grieving, he, be he decides to make the pilgrimage with his son's ashes. Pilgrimage. He knows the name of the destination, but he does not know his purpose. He is simply putting one foot in front of the other. And along the way, he meets a Dutchman, Joost. He says he's trying to lose weight and his real purpose is revealed later. A Canadian named Sarah, who's coming to terms with her past and who says that the pilgrimage is about giving up smoking and then a writer with writer's block, Jack. Tom forms a relationship with these three, not without difficulty, but they become companions along the way. And as they go, Tom places his son's ashes on various points on fence posts and scatters them at memorial points. And then in the final scene, 
Tom, accompanied by his friends, goes down to the sea and scatters what remains of the ashes out to the Atlantic. And then, in a conversation with his phantom son, Daniel, he says, I have nothing to take back with me. And Daniel says to him, oh, yes, you have. And Tom returns into the world, a man who does, did only discovered the purpose of his pilgrimage as he went along and who was changed by the very act of traveling. In Zechariah chapter eight, we have words written to the exiles, to those who have been placed on a, on a forced pilgrimage to a place that they did not want to go. Now, says the Lord, I shall come back to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be called the city of faithfulness and the mountain of the Lord of hosts will be called the holy mountain. These are the words of the Lord of hosts. Once again, old men and women will sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each leaning on a stick because of great age. And the streets of the city will be full of boys and girls at play. These are the words of the Lord of hosts. Even if this may seem impossible to the remnant of this nation in those days, will it also seem impossible to me? They will be my people, and I shall be their God in faithfulness and justice. And then moving along in chapter 8 to verses 10 and on. Before that time, there was no hiring of people or animals because of enemies. No one could go about his business in safety, for I had set everyone at odds with everyone else. And now they will sow in safety. The vine will yield its fruit and the soil its produce, and the heavens will give their moisture with all these things, I shall endow the remnant of this people. Courage. Do not lose heart. And so as we navigate our way from lockdown into some form of future, we're not quite sure what it means with some people returning back to work, with the possibility of some children at least returning to school, and all of the possibilities and anxieties that that is bringing. Courage, do not lose heart. And those words, even if this may seem impossible to the remnant of this nation in those days, will it also seem impossible to me We can't quite imagine the future that is coming. We do not know the destination. Well, we, we have some idea of, of the pilgrimage that we're taking, but we, we, we don't seem to have a clear map. And we're just not sure how we're going to get there. And certainly, we don't know what our purpose is. And the words that I read from Hebrews today will lead us into prayer. With this great cloud of witnesses, all those people described as having faith in Hebrews chapter 11. With this great cloud of witnesses around us, therefore, we too must throw off every encumbrance and the sin that all too readily restricts us and run with resolution the race which lies ahead of us. Our eyes fixed on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the sake of the joy that lay ahead of him, he endured the cross, ignoring its disgrace, 
and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. And so let's fix our eyes on Jesus. Let's take courage and not lose heart. For God, our Lord, is with us. He suffers with us and for us and shows us the way to life. So let's come to God in prayer. And I want to lead you in one of Ignatius's prayers of abandonment. Let's pray. Take, Lord, and receive all my freedom, my memory, my will, my understanding. You have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Give me only the love of you, together with your grace. That is enough for me. And together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Have a good day. God bless you.